All right, so as promised here, we're going to do a system of equations, a uh, homogeneous system of equations that uh, has a non-trivial solution. So um, again, I'm going to use some row reduction. So if you feel com uh, confident about your, uh, you know, row reducing abilities, um, certainly you may skip ahead because uh, kind of grinding this down a little bit may be a little bit like watching grass grow. But, um, you know, again, you got to do what you got to do. So... Um, so I'm just going to write a, a, an augmented matrix using the coefficients. So we have 1, 2, 3, 2, and 0. We've got 1, 3, 5, 5, and 0. Um, we've got 2, 4, 7, 1, and 0. And then we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 6, 7, and 0. All righty, so... Let's start doing our row reduction. So maybe we can do these a step at a time. So again, I want a 1 in the top left corner, which we already have. So I want to get zeros everywhere else in that first column. So I'm going to take negative 1 times row 1 and add that to row 2 to get my new row 2. So I'm going to leave the first row alone. 1, 2, 3, 2, and 0. So negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. Uh, negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Uh, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And again, we've got a 0. To get um, a 0 in the third row, uh, first column, it looks like we can do negative 2 times row 1, add that to row 3 to get our new row 3. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Um, we'll get negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 4. That's also 0. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 7. That's 1. We'll have negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And again, a 0. And then to get a 0 in the bottom left corner, it looks like we can just simply do row 1 plus row 4 to get our new row 4. So 1 and negative 1 is 0. 2 and negative 2 is 0. 3 and negative 6 is negative 3. Um, let's see, 2 and 7 will give us 9. And then again, we have our last entry being 0. All right, so, so far, so good. Still got a little bit, uh, little bit more to do here. If you're really observant, uh, you may even spot something that is kind of useful to tell us that we have non-trivial solutions. Um, and notice that one of these rows is a multiple of the other. Notice the fourth row is a multiple of the third row. But again, um, I know to look for that because I made the example. So, uh, but again, this is something you know that you might want to keep in mind as you're going through them. So, all right, a couple other things. I would like to get, um, we've got a one in our second row, second column. That's good. We want a zero everywhere else. So to do that, I think we can simply take uh, negative two times our row two, add that to row one, and that's going to give us our new row one. So I'm going to go ahead and jot down my second row because I'm not doing anything with it. So negative two times zero plus one is one. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Let's see, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 will be negative 1. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is going to give us negative 4. And then we still have our 0 left over. The next thing I'm going to do here is, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm just going to leave the third row alone. Um, the fourth row, I notice that, hey, everything's divisible by 3. Um, I'm even going to divide it by negative 3. So I'm going to do negative 1 third my fourth row. And that's going to turn into my new fourth row. So I'll have 0, 0. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is uh, 1. 9 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 3. And that leaves us with a 0. And really, at this point, we could even pretty much stop. Uh, again, I see two rows that are exactly identical, but I'm going to do one more step. Okay, so we've got a 1 in our third row, third column. I'm going to get zeros everywhere else. So I'm going to write down my third row, 0, 0, 1, negative 3, 0. 
let's see, to get a, a zero in the uh, first row, third column, I'm going to take row three, add that to row one to give me my new row one. So we'll be left with one, zero. Um, if we add, we'll have another zero. Negative three and negative four is going to be negative seven. And again, we've got a zero. To get a zero in the second row, third column, I'm going to do uh, negative 2 times row 3 and add that to row 2 to get my new row 2. So 0 and 0 will be 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. We have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. Um, negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be positive 6 plus 3 is 9. And then again, we have a 0. And last but not least, notice if we take negative 1 times row 3 and add that to row 4, uh, that's going to give us our new row 4. But if we do that, it's just changing the signs. It's going to make our last row into all zeros. Okay, so what that tells me in this case is when we have this row of all zeros, we're going to have non-trivial solutions. So I'm going to kind of... Uh, rewrite this again as a system of equations. So we have 1, x1, well, we've got 0x2, 0x3, negative 7 times x sub 4 equals 0. The second row says we have 0x1, we have 1x2, 0x3, we have 9x sub 4 equals 0. Our third row, we have 0x1, 0x2, we have 1x3, minus 3x4 equals 0. And then our very last row, we just have a bunch of zeros equaling 0. So I'm not going to write down, um, you know, that, that row. Our last variable, x sub 4, that's what we're going to call our free variable. And what that basically says is, it says we can define that to be whatever number we want, and then we can backtrack and figure out values for uh, the other variables. So generically, I'm just going to let x sub 4 equal the number k. And then I'm going to solve for the other numbers. Well, let's take our uh, last equation. So we have x sub 3 minus 3 times x sub 4, again, which we're defining to be k. Well, if we solve, that says that x sub 3 would equal 3k. All right. Um, now I'm going to take my second equation. So it says we have 1x sub 2 plus 9 times x sub 4, which again is just k, that's going to equal 0. Um, so in this case, it says that x sub 2 is going to equal, well, negative 9k. And last but not least, if we take our first, uh, our first row, it says we have 1x sub 1 minus 7x sub 4, again, which is k. And if we solve, it says that x sub 1 is going to equal 7k. So what this tells us, it says our solutions are going to be of the form. Okay, so we said that x sub 1 will equal 7k. x sub 2 is going to be negative 9k. x sub 3 is going to be 3k. And again, x sub 4, we pick that just to be uh, kind of our starting value of k. So we've got infinitely many solutions. Again, we can pick k to be whatever value we like. So um, a particular solution, again, you can pick your favorite value for k. I'm going to let just simply k equal positive 1 to make the arithmetic easy. So we'll have 7 times 1, negative 9 times 1, 3 times 1, uh, and then k equals 1. This is going to be a solution to the original system of equations. So I'm definitely not going to check, but what you can do is you can plug 7 in for x1 um, everywhere, negative 9 in for x2 everywhere, uh, you know, x sub 3 would equal 3 everywhere, x sub 4 would equal 1 everywhere, and you would find that you have a solution to the system of equations. Um, of course, you could pick another, uh, you could find another particular solution. We could let k equal 2, and then our particular solution, 7 times 2 would be 14, 9 times 2 would be negative 18, uh, 3 times 2 would be 6, and then uh, k is simply equal to 2. So that would be another particular solution. Again, you could go back and plug it into your system of equations 
and verify that it in fact uh, satisfies this homogeneous system. So uh, this is kind of the way that you find trivial and non-trivial solutions. Just do row reduction. Um, and again, if you get this row of all zeros, um, you probably you know know that you're in business here. So. Um, hope this helps. Hope it makes some sense. Again, kind of tedious. The arithmetic, it's easy to make a mistake. Hopefully I didn't anywhere. Um, but again, this is the general idea. Just set up a matrix, um, start doing row reduction, and uh, try to have fun while you're doing it.